What's the most disturbing thing you know happened in real life that sounds like a horror movie? Not safe for work. Some teenagers in a town I lived in kidnapped the owner of the local newspaper, did who knows what to him, and then buried him alive with nothing but a straw to breathe through. He died, and they went to jail. A 17-year-old boy lived in the walls of a house for months so he could spy on his ex-girlfriend. Things peaked when the girl's father saw him dressed as his dead wife, holding an axe and trying to convince her that she was her dead mother. Ronald Jean Simmons Made his kids dig a big hole on his property. Then, as they got off the school bus for Christmas break, he killed them one by one and buried them in the big hole. Two days later, when his adult children arrived he killed them and their children, one of these babies was also his child because he molested his daughter. He threw the adult children in the hole and the babies in the trunk of an old car. The next day, he went on a shooting rampage in the next town over and killed two more people. After he went to death row, the townsfolk burned his house to the ground. He died by capital punishment. Happened in the late 80s in my hometown. There are surprisingly a lot of houses that become targets of arson if something completely foobar psychologically insane happens inside them, the neighborhood just burns the house down to not be reminded of what happened. And sometimes the police don't really investigate. When I was in high school in a tiny midwestern U.S. town, there was a guy who was the town kook. Wrote daily crazy letters to the local newspaper, I wrote for the paper my last two years of high school and his house was covered in political rantings written in black marker. My friends who worked at the town grocery store said he came in every day to buy a giant bottle of rubbing alcohol and a bag of kitty litter, turned out, his mom had died in her bed and he used the kitty litter and rubbing alcohol to kill the smell while living with her and cashing her social security checks for nearly two years. Oh my word, this is so similar to a small town in my county. The sheriff's department was sent to do a wellness check on an old woman after the son that lived out of town had kept being told by his step half brother I can't remember which, for quite some time that she was sleeping, each time he called to talk to her. Turns out she had been dead for something like two years and the son that lived with her left her in her easy chair, covered her with a blanket, and hung air fresheners off of her. According to reports, he assured the officer he and his mother were fine but they insisted on seeing the mother, which he allowed and that's when they found her in the recliner. He had been living off direct deposits into her account from her late husband's estate. I worked with this guy. He was real nice, but had his struggles. One day I noticed he wasn't at work, unlike him. Found out that the previous night he drove to the cemetery, doused himself in gasoline, and lit himself on fire. His girlfriend had somehow followed him there and tried unsuccessfully to stop slash help him and got some serious burns as well. It was rough. They found his car in the lake. He was in the trunk. His dick had been cut off and put in his mouth. He had been shot three times. A guy cut off his mom's head, threw the body on the porch, kicked the head down the street, and then threw himself in front of a train. His neighbors watching thought it was a Halloween prank. A past colleague rented out the apartment after not knowing what happened. They moved from very far out of state for a job and needed an apartment. I had older friends that rode four-wheelers to take care of their pet livestock. One day they noticed the horse was choking so they went to help the horse. The horse and donkey both had rabies and attacked literally biting through bones. My friends both died horrible deaths, one after a couple of days hospitalized, the other after weeks. I still get nauseous when it crosses my mind, and it has been years. The Death of Sylvia Likens, I would strongly recommend avoiding reading it if you're faint-hearted. The gist is that her parents left her, and her sister, with another family, to take care of them. That other family tortured Sylvia in increasingly heinous ways, including getting the boyfriends of two of the daughters to torture her by doing things like judo, throwing her into concrete, etc. There's a lot. A lot. It's an example of the depths of human depravity. The worst part is that her murderers were found guilty, but all of them got shortened sentences or were released on parole. 
The main culprit only served 14 years, and a couple of the ones involved only served two years. For everything they did to that girl. That's the punishment they received. Adolfo Constanzo and his cult of human sacrifice, highlights include, at least 27 ritualistic murders slash human sacrifices, ritualistic torture and murder, including sodomy and castration, beheadings and removal of bones slash organs to ritualistically sacrifice. An elderly man was his wife's caretaker. She had dementia, but is relatively functional, can still drive, etc., although she sometimes gets confused about where she's going. Kids live out of town and rotate calling every week. They finally realize no one has actually talked to dad in months, it's just mom answering the phone, who always says he's at the store or taking a nap or in the shower. They call someone to go check on dad. Dad had presumably died in his sleep many weeks or months ago, and mom just kept living life unaware, including sleeping in the same bed as his body every night. It was so bad the interior of the windows were solid black with flies and they had to use shovels to scoop his liquid remains off the bed and into a plastic bin as best they could. ISIS Treatment of Civilians and Prisoners Burning girls alive for refusing sex and slowly drowning men in cages. Makes me sick to think they hurt so many people. There was a bus stop by my junior high where I would catch the bus to go home. In the house 20 feet away, there was a man kept in a garage being tortured and eventually murdered. The owner of the house used to sit on the front steps and wave to us as we walked by. I only found out because years later I saw a documentary of the case. Blew my mind. From personal experience, buddy of mine and I were hanging at his family condo up in the Ozarks. Throughout the day, we kept hearing bumps, footsteps and scratching up in the attic. We thought it was rodents, so we checked it out. No rodents. Instead, we found a disheveled elderly woman up there. Turns out two days before we arrived, our next-door neighbor locked his wife in his attic. She managed to tear and claw through to our attic, and she couldn't have been any younger than 70, how she did that, and without food or water was something incredible, but my god that was a horrifying sight to see in one's attic. Not to mention her husband's actions. The Victoria Martin's murder in New Mexico. Some of the most fucked up shit ever, the little girl was drugged, abused, and murdered on her birthday. I'm being vague with the details because it's so fucked up. Loud music and a lot of screaming from a house down the street one Saturday. Most people thought it was just teenage girls throwing a party, but one of the neighbors called the cops with a noise complaint. Turned out it started out as teen girls trying to throw a party and have fun, but some adult men had entered the party and were trying to rape the girls. I was younger then so I don't remember if the men were led in by the owner of the house or if it was a home invasion, but it was a bunch of grown men trying to rape girls as young as 13. The existence of locked-in syndrome, you are completely paralyzed, you cannot move, you cannot speak, you are effectively a vegetable, except you're conscious and aware the entire time. My kid dated a dude who killed his mom, stuffed her body in the freezer, told his siblings that she went to Florida, they lived in Virginia, and, if I remember the story correctly, proceeded to have a party over the weekend before her body was discovered. This was long after they'd broken up, but it was a surprise to see his face in the paper and a shock to see why it was in the paper. This was back in the early aughts and he took a plea deal, so it didn't make much more of a splash. Early 80s, I was visiting my cousin in Cincinnati. We played with the neighborhood kids all summer. The week I was leaving the family that lived two houses down from my cousin, the husband came home from work and killed his family with an axe. There were four kids, his wife, and he took himself out with a shotgun. Mario Uriosti The dumb kid who was jailed for shoplifting Was sent to the New Mexico State Penitentiary in 1980. He was originally placed in a cell block housing violent criminals, where he was gang raped by seven inmates. Mario had filed a lawsuit against his rapists, so prison officials had housed him in protective custody for his own protection. Then a huge riot occurred, and a lot of the rioting prisoners took the opportunity to settle scores. Uriosti was one of the targets for revenge. His body was found hanged, with his throat cut and his dismembered genitals stuffed into his mouth 
that was one of the most violent uprisings in U.S. penal history. The Danny LaPlanta story, hopefully I spelled it right. This dude was living in his ex-GF's house, without her knowledge and pretending to be the ghost of her mom. The dad finally called the police when Danny was wearing the mom's dress and about to attack him with a hatchet. In 1985, there was a huge earthquake, 8.1, in Mexico City. My aunt, who has lived there all her life, was working when it happened. Luckily, she and others were able to get out of the building. She mentioned a close friend of hers told her she forgot her bag and she had to return for it. The building collapsed shortly after and she never saw her friend again. Also, a few years ago, I was working in a hotel in Cancun. Made some great friends there, mostly chefs and waiters. One of the chefs was 35 and he told me they offered him the chance to work for the hotel in Japan, but he refused. When I asked him why he told me that those ideas are for younger people, he didn't want to have the stress of learning a new language, being away from his family, and starting from zero all over in a country so far from home. A year later, we both were no longer working in Cancun, but we kept talking every now and then. His final message was him saying Merry Christmas to me. A few months later, all the waiters I had on Facebook started sharing his pic. He was kidnapped and to this day no one knows anything about him. I can only imagine that if these two people would have taken a different choice, they would still be alive. My dad and uncle were part of a small coastal town's defense force in Lebanon in the late 1970s when the civil war was on the brink of breaking out, fighting broke out and the skirmishes that were taking place evolved into an all-out assault on the town. On one of the last nights before the massacre took place invading forces killed my grandfather, one of my uncles and his entire family, three children, and his pregnant wife. My dad was called to the house in the morning when the fighting subsided. He had to help carry his family and load their bodies in the back of a truck where they took them to the local cemetery for a quick funeral service before they fled the town, he said when they got down to the beach and were waiting for boats to load up the refugees and take them to safety they looked back and saw the entire town with smoke billowing up from it. It was like a horror story for me to find out about it. I've never asked my father how he has dealt with it. But after so many years he moved back to that coastal village just south of Bay Road and he loves it with all his heart. When I was in college, a kid asked his friend to meet him a motel near campus because he was contemplating suicide. When the friend got there, the kid was not suicidal but confessed his love to the friend and said he got the room so they could have sex. The friend turned him down, said he wasn't gay and had no interest in him, and went to leave. The kid snapped killed the friend, dismembered his body, and threw it in the hotel dumpster. Went back to campus as nothing happened. It didn't take long for the police to catch the kid, but the fact that he killed and dismembered his friend and so casually went back to campus was pretty fucked up. The death of Brian Wells, the story behind the Netflix show, Evil Genius, basically, a bunch of lunatic sadists grabbed a pizza delivery guy and strapped a bomb around his neck to get him to rob a bank. He obliged and the bomb went off anyway, happened on camera with police watching. The Toy Box Killer, even worse than horror movies though. He kidnapped girls, played a record of him explaining how he is going to torture and rape them every day in a soundproof truck trailer, and had a mirror installed in the ceiling so the victims would see it all happen to them. His wife was in this shit too, I just can't understand how sick people can be at worst. When I was very young, five or six. I decided to be a big girl and lock the bathroom door for the first time while showering. I turned on the tap water from the tub faucet, let it heat up, and got in. Then I flipped the water from the tub to the shower, sadly, I was in the bathroom we rarely used for bathing and unbeknownst to me, an ant colony had nested in the shower head, so instead of water coming out, it was just ANTS. Of course, I screamed and was freaking out. And of course, because I had locked the door, no one could help me. Eventually, my clever older sister picked the lock on the doorknob and they got me out. I have repressed most of what happened but my sister recalls there being a full-on pile of ants on my head. I just remember my dad wrapping me in a towel and running me to the other shower to get them off of me. Needless to say, I do not like ants now, and I always let the shower head run for a bit before getting in. 
I just discovered we have carpenter ants in the walls of our rental. I can hear them in the walls at night and it keeps me up. Did you know carpenter ants make little swishing noises to communicate? Shiver. My grandmother and uncle on my mother's side were murdered back in the 80s. I was three years old when it happened. There was a movie made about it too, called Sleep Murder. The murderer is not related to us. The story is that they were out drinking having a good time and went home in the same cab to drink some more. Guy gets blackout drunk and stabs them to death. I remember my mother telling me when I was three years old, we went to go visit them. She let me try to open the door, an RCMP member came running and screaming to not to open the door. A minute ago, I saw a video of people falling from an aircraft who were trying to escape from their own country. Nothing less than a horror movie. Lighting babies on fire because the Taliban thought the family was working with the Americans, source, I was the one holding the baby when the dad brought him to me. Still alive, fuck. Elena Oyos and Carl Tanzler, I'm difficult to phase as an adult, but at age 10 I read a story that had happened in Key West, Florida, I grew up in Miami. It involved necrophilia over many years after a grave robbery. It freaked me out. I explained about this one. Back in 2009, a lady was killed in a case of fetal napping. The lady's daughter and the killer were found in New Hampshire. The killer got life as it was here in Massachusetts. The daughter was sent to be with her biological father. That's all I know from there. I'm sure the father had to explain to her at some point. I was in fifth or sixth grade and the high school's kids rode the same school bus as the grade school. There were these two HS boys watching me the entire ride home, pointing and whispering. They lived in the same neighborhood so they got off at the same stop but they lived in the opposite direction, so when I got off the bus I started walking fast and they came off the bus in a run, so I started running home. I was a latchkey kid so I was running to an empty place. I beat them to my house because it was a short distance and I had a head start. Once I was inside with the door locked, they started banging on the doors and windows and they were looking in all the windows trying to see me. I was hiding under a table, after that, I started riding a different bus to my grandmother's house after that until we moved a year later, I was fucking terrified. There is this boy I was friends with when I was growing up in India, my grandma's farmhand son. Heard a few years ago that he got married and his wife was pregnant. One day my mom called me and told me that the wife and husband fought and the wife who was eight months pregnant doused herself in kerosene and set it on fire. She suffered severe burns, but survived, only for a couple of days. The baby would not stop writhing the whole time. I heard he remarried after a year. Fred Rose West Both had shitty childhoods, Fred had a sexual relationship with his mom and his dad, a farmer, taught him bestiality. He sexually abused young girls and when he was arrested, was really blasé about it because he thought everybody did it. He didn't stop. He eventually murdered several young women and buried them under his patio. He's been suspected of being responsible for the disappearance of other women. His wife had an equally disgusting childhood. She had a sexual relationship with her dad and sexually abused her brother on a regular basis. When she met Fred, he became a pimp of sorts to her because he loved watching her with other men. When her dad found out, he started paying her for sex too. She and Fred physically sexually abused many women and their own children, again, both believing it was perfectly normal behavior, but somehow still managed to escape social services and would dodge suspicion by taking their kids to different hospitals when they were beaten to the point of injury. They went decades dodging suspicion and getting away with their crimes, they slipped through the net on several occasions when they could have easily been stopped, which is probably the most disturbing thing about this, he hung himself before he could be sentenced. She was given several life sentences and is still alive. She's never admitted to anything. A serial killer, I don't remember his name. He lured boys and girls into an old World War II bomb shelter in Britain. He asked them for sex and when they accepted he had sex with them and killed them. He chopped up the bodies and buried them in the shelter. 
when they refused he apologized and let them go. Just imagine being a girl or boy and a pretty handsome guy asks you for sex, but you refuse and you leave a scene that could have been your death. An elementary school teacher of mine told us this story a few times, idk if it's true or not. A three-year-old got separated from his mom at the mall, two boys who were like 12 to 13 approached him and said they would take him to his mom. So they led the three-year-old out of the mall to a discreet location where they tortured and murdered him. There's this street camera footage of an older woman presumably being dropped off in front of her house. She gets out of the car and starts walking towards her house. As she's right near the doorstep a huge block of hardened snow slides off her roof and falls directly on her head, knocking her to the ground. The guy who dropped her off, could have been her son which makes this even more disturbing, hops out of the car and rushes to check on her. Turns out the snow completely crushed her skull. Seemed like some stuff straight out of Final Destination. One minute, just fine the next minute, instant death. Makes you realize just how fast somebody can be taken away. The mafia hitman Richard the Iceman Kuklinski would sometimes restrain his victims in places that were infested with rats. Over time, the rats would discover the helpless person, swarm them, and devour them alive. Kuklinski would tape the whole thing and watch it, later on, to try and elicit an emotional response from himself. Watching the tapes later made him, in his own words, a little nervous. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And feel free to leave a comment or email the horror girls with suggestions, your own scary experience, original fiction, disconcerting videos, or anything horror related that you would like to share. We'd also love to help promote indie or up and coming horror authors by posting a book review or your book trailer. Email us for more info.